okay um so good morning and uh, welcome we'll pray and uh, get started so would someone like to lead in prayer from the on campus batch abhishek you can just pass the mic to him or someone else We don't have time. Thank you, Holy Father. We give thanks for this beautiful time, Father. As we are going to start our studies, Father, we give thanks for this time, Father. We give thanks for teacher, Father. We pray for the teacher. You bless the teacher, Father. Father, we pray for ourselves, Father. We, you give us wisdom and knowledge. So whatever she will teach us, we will understand it properly. And whatever we will learn, Father, we will use in your. We will use it. in your mighty way father we submit is this matter in your mighty hand and we ask uh, in the name of jesus amen amen thank you thank you there uh, for praying uh, in the last class i think we had a good discussion about prophetic prayer and how we must hear from god um, and that's how you know sometimes god leads us by speaking to us and telling us um, you know what he is going to do whether in our lives or um, in someone else's life so apart from normal prayer normal prayer is we have some set of prayer points and we seek god for those but uh, prophetic prayer is when we pray on the basis of revelation or hearing from god uh, and each one of us can practice that we can hear from god about what he wants us to do and uh, who he uh, wants us to pray for uh, so that was a very helpful subject now we can move on to the next subject here which has to do with uh, a prayer and persisting in prayer so the term persistence or persisting this is chapter 10 in our notes it has to do with um being consistent being patient uh, and continuing to pray those re requests without giving up okay so persistence is to keep praying till you see the result some of us we could pray uh, about a matter but when it doesn't come through the tendency is to question god why is it not happening uh, what happened what did i do what is god thinking and somewhere in between we have this tendency to just let it go we don't pray about it anymore but persistence means when we know that something is the will of god or something is in god's heart for us we should not stop praying till we see that happen or the fulfillment of that matter so that's what we will discuss right now so in the bible uh, jesus spoke about persistence or he spoke about um, being consistent and uh, following up you know on our prayer points so there are two passages luke chapter 11 and luke chapter 18 where we will read um, you know how exactly jesus meant persistence to be so uh, one of us will have to read from luke 11 verses 5 through 8 and another person could please read from luke 18 verses 1 through 8 luke chapter 11 verses 5 and he said to them which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him friend lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and i have nothing to set before him verse 7 and he will answer from within and say do not trouble me the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give to you verse 8 i say to you who he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend yet because of his persistence he will rise and give him as many as he needs hmm okay so thank you for uh, reading that a uh, portion abhishek so here we see that um in this situation 
ओके देर इज अ पर्सन हु हैज अ फ्रेंड विजिटिंग एट अ वेरी ऑड आवर विच इज मिड नाइट आवर एंड ऑब्वियसली एट मिड नाइट पीपल आर रेस्टिंग इन दर होम्स बट देन दिस पर्सन ही वॉन्ट्स टू प्रोवाइड फॉर द विजिटिंग फ्रेंड एंड सो ही आस्क अनादर पर्सन अनादर फ्रेंड ही गोज अड एंड आस्क एंड सेज यू नो गिव मी लेन मी थ्री लोव्स फॉर माई फ्रेंड हैज कम टू मी ऑन हिज जर्नी but you see in a situation like this nobody would like to feel disturbed like you don't want to be disturbed right uh but one of the qualities of this host is that he doesn't give up he is insisting or he is persisting let's see what he says um even though the friend says don't trouble me the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give to you uh, the response is uh the next uh, passage or the next uh, verse there we see because of his persistence because of his persistence he will rise and give okay whatever is required so in this situation we have to understand that there is a person who is unwilling so at midnight everybody is unwilling but even an unwilling person when there are repeated requests what happens sometimes they yield or sometimes they change their mind and they say okay fine you are asking so many times you just take it okay so that is the picture which is being painted for us uh, but is god like that is god somebody who is unwilling to give us what do you think maybe the time that we are asking is disturbing god or you know what we are asking is too big for god and that's why he says don't disturb me come tomorrow does that ever happen with god it doesn't because the thing is that though the example here is mentioning a person who is unwilling god is not like okay? so persistence is necessary but we have to understand it uh, with god in the picture so obviously god is not someone who will make us wait and make us suffer and you know make us um, struggle he is not that kind even then jesus is talking about an attitude on the part of the person who is asking what is that we must have persistence or we should not give up that attitude is necessary to see answers to prayer so that's the focus it's not that god is not willing god is very much willing but he likes an attitude where we don't give up and we say god your word says you have promised you have spoken i'm standing on your word i'm standing on these scriptures i want to see the fulfillment of this uh, promise okay so the persistence on the part of uh the person who spring or on our part is what is necessary now let's look at one more uh passage this is in luke 18 this is also a parable uh about persistence on the part of somebody making a request so luke 18 verses 1 to 8 sister can i read then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart saying there was in in a certain city a judge who did not fear god nor regard men now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying get justice for me from my adversary and he would not for a while but afterward he said within himself so i do not fear god nor regard man yet because this widow troubles me i will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me then the lord said hear what the unjust just said and shall god not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him though he bears long with them I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man comes will he really find faith on the earth okay so very similar um story here 
where there is a widow okay and she goes to the ruler of that city and she is asking for justice what does it say about this judge this judge um yeah in verse 4 the last part uh the judge makes this statement though i do not fear god nor regard man so this judge is not uh, doesn't seem like very righteous because he is not thinking about man or he is not thinking about god and then we go on to read in um, verse 6 unjust judge okay these are the qualities of the judge now a person like this who is unrighteous unjust we don't even expect a result sometimes when we approach uh, you know some person or some agency where we feel they won't respond a hope is very small because maybe you know it's just a waste of time to approach such people but in this case though the person is unjust unrighteous he still responds to the request of the widow why because of her pers- persistence it says here because of her continual coming continuously she's coming back to the ruler and saying you have to do something you have to do something i won't leave you you have to give me justice so the persistence is what pushed the ruler to help this widow now again in this passage we have to understand there is an unwilling unjust ruler is god like that no right god is willing god is righteous god is gracious so actually to be persistent with god it should not be so difficult because it's easier to trust god it's easier to believe that god will do it for us but the focus of both of these passages is the persistence or the consistency on the part of the person who is making the prayer if we ask and then we let go it's unfortunate because even though something may be a promise from god we may not see its fulfillment okay but if we are consistent if we are persistent then we will see a fulfillment of that promise in fact if you go back to luke chapter 11 just go back there look 11 verses 5 through 8 so we read about this friend isn't it who was unwilling to give but we saw how he gave because of the persistence of the one asking what continues after that what continues after verse 8 just check in the bible yeah so jesus is teaching about prayer after talking about persistence and he say so see even somebody who does not want to give will give if you ask again and again then why don't you ask god because god will give you if something is in his plan if it is in his purpose god will give it therefore ask you will receive okay seek you will find knock the door will be open to you don't give up in prayer is the point that is being made here and in luke 18 verse 1 just look at that luke 18 and verse 1 what does it say yeah correct so there is a word of encouragement what is jesus saying he is speaking a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart meaning keep praying don't get discouraged and you don't see immediate results don't be discouraged 
that's the whole point so sometimes when it comes to prayer we need patience okay uh, and i've been saying in some situations we may see it it depends on the timing that god has assigned for that promise to be fulfilled uh, sometimes we see it happen in weeks sometimes we see it happen in months sometimes it's even a matter of years but if we become tired if we become discouraged and we give up then we can't blame god that god didn't do it it's us you know who actually gave up and that is why god's word says don't be discouraged don't lose heart men must always pray we have to always pray and not be discouraged okay um now in hebrews chapter 6 we read about um you know rest uh god giving us uh, or in with the example of the israelites if you remember the israelites they were journeying right they were journeying um uh to reach the promised land so you you read like as you move towards hebrews chapter 6 you read about them and how finally they uh reached the promised land and all of that okay but like in hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 there's one statement that the writer makes uh, what can somebody read that out hebrews 6 verse 12 so that you may not be sluggish but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises okay so there are two qualities which we need to fulfill god's purpose what are the two things it's mentioned here what what do you need faith and patience we can have faith but if we lack patience then even then it's difficult to inherit the promises of god we may have a lot of patience but if we don't carry faith it's difficult to receive the promises of god but there is a combination when we are people of faith along with patience so when we talk about the subject of prayer yes there are many prayers that get answered like that and when we look at the ministry of jesus uh, especially in his ministry in his personal time he spent hours of prayer with the lord but in public ministry it was like quick right be healed be set free demon come out lazarus come forth and it happened so those were all commands that he issued uh, on the basis of his strong relationship with god he didn't sit for hours and persist with god in that moment but throughout his personal journey he has already been spending time with god he's already been praying about all these matters so the answers were very quick so quick you hardly find jesus uh, commanding twice i think in only one situation he commands twice but otherwise it's all instant immediate okay peace be still the storm just calm down any prayer that you know you find jesus especially in the ministry uh results are immediate so today when we pray we pray for people uh, we get excited right i prayed and this um, they got healed we prayed this pain disappeared we, um, we prayed and they are able to move their hands do immediate things happen yes they do okay immediately lot of results uh, take place okay that's part of the way our faith works that's part of the way our prayer works but there are other prayers that fall in categories where we need some patience we cannot get immediate results for certain prayers so uh, what tends to happen to us as believers is we become discouraged we feel in all these things i'm praying for uh, these matters and i'm seeing quick results but i'm praying for other matters in my personal life i'm not seeing any quick results something is wrong okay maybe something is wrong with me we begin to ask such questions but what is god's word teach us there is also the element of persistence 
patience there are some prayers for which we must be um, persistent means to consistently come back to god like that friend or like that woman again and again again and again okay so again and again asking god uh, is it do you think it's okay or what do you what do you feel about that asking god repeatedly or is it a sign of lack of faith we already prayed about something we prayed with faith okay now to ask god about the same thing again is it okay is it not okay it's okay all right so you see when we pray for the first time okay faith is necessary because without faith our prayers will not get answered so we have to pray with faith sometimes when we don't have faith we do this thing of you know begging god please 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 again and again right you ring the bell again and again hopefully he'll open the door for us but that's not what we are talking about that's not what we are talking about the first time we pray we must have faith how will we have faith as long as we know that it is the will of god the purpose of god it's in the word of god we'll have faith because if we ask according to his will he hears us right we've already discussed that so when the first time we pray it's in the will of god and we um believe that god will do it for us but there are some prayers where we know that it may take time so we may need to go back and keep expressing our desire for that to happen for example i told us when we pray for revival okay, so many of us we are praying for months for years our churches are praying okay for long time we can't stop praying because it's in the heart of god but god also wants us to pray that is co laboring with god there is value to that it's not that we are begging god and he is not listening to us that's not the picture he is definitely listening to us but he wants somebody to labor in prayer for these matters okay that is why uh, we must be persistent that is why we need some patience so in life like the israelites you know like the people who received the promises those who received the promises uh, the bible tells us two things are required faith patience without these we will not inherit the promises of god both of these are necessary okay so this is how we understand persistence in prayer and uh, hebrews 10:35 that's also a really nice scripture kindly turn to it and uh, who would like to read that who would like to volunteer i can read sister oh, okay it's already with the mic is already there you read it next you can pass it therefore do not throw away your confidence which has a great reward hmm okay so what does it say therefore do not throw away your confidence which has great reward it's just like jesus uh speaking in luke 18 and verse 1 therefore men always ought to pray and not lose heart same way hebrews 10:35 do not cast away your confidence which has great reward in other words keep having faith in god keep hoping in god keep asking god keep trusting god keep praying there will be a time when we will see the promises of god fulfilled so what if <coughs> you know you are convinced that this is god's uh, plan and god will do it for me and you're like thoroughly convinced but it's still taking time to see that plan fulfilled how will we pray let's say we prayed by faith once okay and then we continued praying in faith for uh, like two months 
but by that time we already have revelation from god we have promises pictures scriptures everything we are sure 100% sure but this matter will only happen one year later you still have time right for the whole year how to pray good praise yeah so we must praise and thank god you remember abraham yeah so he gave glory to god he gave thanks to god so once we are convinced that something will be fulfilled we must start thanking god so we can spend time thanking god uh, and that is also prayer that's also persistent prayer you got it so this is the way in which one must confidently continue in prayer uh, and uh, not give up there are you know quite a number of uh, scriptures in our notes that talk about continuing earnestly or continuing sincerely continue sincerely in prayer all right now um why is it that some matters take time why is it that some answers take time let's look at that question what do you what do you feel what could be the reasons sister because it's Sorry? not in uh, god's timing or god's will god knows best okay okay god knows best um sister it is not in god's timing i can see that somebody is trying to answer online but we can't hear a person uh, so sister uh, gertrude please excuse us today there's some issue we're not able to hear the audio of the online students so if you don't mind please uh, uh, type in the chat then i can read out your question yeah so the question i'm asking is why do some answers take time god knows best that's one answer what else correct okay for everything there is a time that is uh, observed in the way god works so god works very wisely according to his timetable okay so that is one of the main reasons why uh, certain answers don't come immediately there is a timing remember we uh, talked about the appointed times of god or uh, the greek word is kairos okay the kairos moments of god so in god's time at the right time it even bible even says uh, galatians 4:4 that the lord jesus he came in the fullness of time now if you go back to the book of genesis we'll see there that god created adam and eve and uh, you know the serpent came deceived but you find a promise of god in the book of genesis where god says that the the seed of the the man will crush the head of the serpent in genesis god said that that satan will be defeated it's way back so once genesis has happened we are wondering god when are you going to send the seed of adam who is this seed of adam who will come and crush satan everyone's waiting for the promise of god but in galatians chapter 4 and verse 4 it says in the fullness of time god sent jesus so there was a timing right uh, like 2000 years have had passed and then later you find that at a certain time jesus christ is being born so we cannot function um, you know according to our own time table there is a certain time table that god has in mind so there is god's timing we have to be patient enough to wait for god's timing for things to be fulfilled in our lives okay so this applies for everything in personal life there is god's timing in um, uh, ministry life there is god's timing you know we may start in the ministry and we may think oh by by this time i should do all these great things and you know i should have a building and i should do uh, i should go here go there but there is a timing we just have to patiently journey with god at the right time 
God will make all those things happen. Or how about you know the way the world functions or the way uh, things happen in the nation? There's the timing. Right? We are all aware that we are living in the last days. Uh, or the last of the last days and there are so many things happening in the world we hear about matters that are going on in the world but things are progressing according to god's timetable okay so that is something we have to understand we we must be patient and be understanding of god's timing if it is the right time to move we should know this is the time come on let's do this Okay, but maybe there are times when we have to wait. At that time, we should just wait. Trust God, pray, thank God, and hold on for the right moment. Okay, this is very, very important. This again is sort of, you know, discerning, uh, discernment from our side, wisdom from our side. God can give us that wisdom that we require. So timing, because of God's timing, sometimes we feel that there are delays. Now, what other reasons could be there? Uh, why the answer doesn't come immediately? Any other reasons? Timing is one. Timing is okay. Right? What else? Okay, maybe it's not according to God's will. Mm, fine. See, your answer is right. But because we have already understood that we should try as much as possible to pray according to God's will, we are working with that in mind, that we've already prayed according to God's will, and still it's not happened. So yeah, if it's not God's will, then you know it may not happen. Okay, a lot of quotes coming from Akhil today. Uh, so God's delays are not God's denials. Um, that's true. But why are there delays? One is timing. God is testing us. Hmm. Could be. Could be. Yes. Uh, sorry? He's building you up. Okay, fine. All right. Okay, God is building us up. That's also correct. Yeah. God is building us up. Any other reasons? Mm. Mm. Okay. So, um, Aman is saying that there is uh, evil or there, um, there is the demonic kingdom. They will try to stop the answers to prayers in our lives, which is true. Actually, it's true. Okay. So we find in uh, the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 and 13, there is, a, there is a situation where Daniel prays to God and God answers him immediately uh, but the answer doesn't reach daniel and uh, he is fasting and praying for 21 days 21 days right for the answer to reach him why when god has already answered the moment he prayed god answered him but there was a demonic um sort of interference which stopped the answer to from coming to him so in the same way, in our lives, there can be certain situations where it's not like God is not answering. He has answered. But we must engage in a certain level of spiritual warfare. Okay? So when we engage in spiritual warfare, what happens? Uh, you, in this particular situation, in the case where Daniel prayed, uh, God sent angels to fight the demonic rulers. Same way, when we pray, God has already granted, yes, approved, take it. But the hindrance, which is there because of demons, as we pray, what happens is that God will destroy. 
that hindrance how he does it that's up to him but in the case of daniel we see that angels go and they start fighting the demonic rulers that's when actually the answer is released to daniel so these are all um, you know some points to keep in mind when there are delays maybe maybe okay that there, there is some form of a hindrance in the answer from coming through um while i agree like what uh, akil said right god's delays god's delays but even when we say god's delays i feel like god actually doesn't delay you know what i mean we are we are um, combining those two terms god's delays as if god is working late and you know god is um, postponing things and making it late for us he never does that he's always working on time but there are other factors in the picture which are the problem okay which we have to identify first is we must be discerning of timings is this the right time i'm asking god god you do this do this do this is it correct like can god do it now or is it meant to happen in another time and the second thing is yes i know god has answered me but i have to engage in spiritual warfare to destroy the works of the demons okay so that is the second thing the third one why there could be delays is some of the other points that all of you shared so i'll just quickly look at the chat here um i had asked the question why don't we receive immediate answers and there are uh, responses um aparmita says satan satan at work my sister gertrude it's not in god's will and timing jennifer god knows the timings sanjay wrong motives in prayer yeah correct so we don't receive because we ask amiss the bible says that's true then jennifer god has a specific plan for us and in his timing our prayer according to his will will be answered um according to the time that will be a great blessing for us maybe satan is responsible for the delay satan is hindering our prayers okay thank you so much for your responses as we've uh, uh, examined what you are saying is correct okay now timing we we have some understanding about timing second is we have an understanding about demonic interference okay the third reason the third reason is god wants us to be fully obedient before we can see certain answers okay that was put in a different way by some of you um i think uh, asapu said um uh, uh test yeah he said test uh, and uh, <coughs> somebody said god is building a character that is true you know sometimes what god does is he allows us to go through a season where we are built up as a person okay as a believer as a child of god as a minister i think about the life of uh, paul okay apostle paul uh, you probably have done this in fulfilling god's purpose you know ministers foundation when apostle paul was called by god uh, the historians say he was roughly around 30 33 years old okay around that age so what will we think oh this person is already 30 something years old you start the ministry now your whole life you can serve god um, as long as you live so we are always in a hurry we want to do it immediately but when you study the life of paul you understand that there were at least 16 years 16 to 17 years in the life of apostle paul which are called as silent years silent years where the bible doesn't comment about it like what was he doing uh, where was he serving uh, what exactly happened not much information but what is going on in those years he's he his character is being developed as a minister of god you know he is being grounded in the doctrine of god's word uh, he is he is ministering to people uh, you know teaching the truth of god's word what would that have been easy for paul i don't think so 
16 years, nobody even knows the name. You don't read up Paul at all. You read in Acts 9, and then suddenly in Acts 11, again, Paul comes back. Barnabas goes and brings him back. But in between, like Acts 9, Acts 11, 17 years. So we may ask God, God, why are you delaying? You know, Paul is like your best candidate. Put him to work immediately. Let him start his work. Let him do all the missionary journeys. But God says, I'm not in a hurry. I need character to be built up okay, in this individual. So the greater the work, it is said. So Akhil, I'll give you one quote. Okay, The greater the work, the greater the preparation. So God is not in a hurry. He's happy to prepare us. He's happy to allow us to go through that journey so that um, everything in us, our knowledge, our skills, our character, our values, standards, right? All that is put in order to some extent. Obviously, we're not saying, oh, perfection, but to some extent, some maturity. When God sees that, okay, now you're ready, you're mature, come on, start the work. So God is waiting for uh, that preparation. God is waiting for that kind of obedience from our side. Only then he can say, okay, now you're ready, come on, do this. Okay, till that time, we may question, God, why are you not doing? Why are you not opening the door? And God is saying, you're not ready. You need some more time to prepare yourself. Okay, you need some more time to, um, you know, uh, set everything right in your heart. Pray correctly so that the answer for that prayer comes. So in various matters, this happens. The attitudes of our hearts becomes the problem. Well, God wants to answer, but maybe, for example, you know, I'm praying for somebody to be blessed. But in my heart, um, I'm very judgmental about that person or, you know, um, I, I carry some kind of bitterness for that person. Maybe on the surface, I just prayed for them because they asked me to pray. But deep within my heart, I have unforgiveness, bitterness, uh, anger. And then I'm asking God, God, why, why are you not answering my prayers? God is saying your attitude is not correct. That attitude needs to be set right within our hearts. So sometimes it's God's grace actually. God is very gracious to us. He allows time and he says, this is the time I'm giving you where you can um, rectify, change these matters within your heart. So it tends to be the fact that we are not completing all obedience or we are not completing all God's requirements in order to walk through that open door or receive that blessing um, you know, or uh, see the fulfillment of that promise. So even that can, we are saying delay. It's not because God is delaying. Where is the delay? On whose side is the delay? It's our side, right? So the faster we respond and yield to God, the quicker the answers will come. So these are all some of the reasons why there can be delays in our prayer. We're talking a little bit more about um, persistence in prayer. Uh, we already talked about Elijah. You remember Elijah? We said he's a prophet of God. So he knew how to hear from God. Uh, and he heard from God that there is going to be rain. Uh, there's going to be drought. Okay. So he already knows in 1 Kings chapter 18, he communicates it. But we saw how he prayed, isn't it? He prayed seven times. Now the seven times is the persistence that we are talking about. Where even Elijah knew that he has to pray again and again and again for this particular matter, for it to be fulfilled. Now if... Um, a man like Elijah, and this is way back in the Old Testament. Today, thank God, we have the uh, Bible in our hands. You know, we can read about all these people and, you know, get uh, the wisdom from their lives. But think about Elijah. At that time, you didn't even have 
the the written copy of um, what scripture has to say but by uh, insight and wisdom and revelation this man knew that there are some matters where one needs to pray repeatedly and that is why he prays and even understands what is the time the moment he sees some manifestation he starts to move isn't it so that discernment elijah had and the bible teaches us in the book of james there is a scripture it's in uh, james chapter 5 uh, it's uh, verse 17 where it says elijah was a man with a nature like ours he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for 3 years and 6 months and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit so what does it tell us it says elijah was a man who are we we are human beings isn't it when it says elijah was a man it simply say means he was just a human being we are also just human beings but if elijah could pray and it rained or you know there was um, drought on his word same thing is applicable to us today if we pray earnestly persistently we can also see results all right so um, i'm just going to stop here we can come back maybe have some discussions and then close off this chapter and we'll move to the next chapter so we can stop now yeah there are no questions fine so we'll go for a break come thank you